Hey, y'all. I just wanted to share a little bit from the past 10 days or so working with a couple different APIs. It's been a really amazing period of learning for me, uh, specifically around building tooling to grab data from search results pages and also building crawlers to crawl different websites for page level data. And I feel like there's some lessons that I just thought were really critical to share that I think anyone working with any kind of technical SEO might get a, a kick out of. And it's this, uh, Data for SEO has a really cool uh, API endpoint, which is called their Google Organic Live Advanced API endpoint. And I have felt for a long time, like I understand search results pages and I understand the different search features, but I feel like spending some time with this exact API endpoint took my understanding of search results pages from zero to fairly extensive in a period of 10 days. There are tons of data providers out there you know, GrubWords comes to mind, uh, Nozzle comes to mind, Rank Ranger. There's a whole bunch of different APIs that are available to get data from search results pages. And I'm not advocating for data for SEO as the best. I just feel like I had a great time using it. Their pricing is pretty reasonable. And I just wanted to share what you can learn by just playing with one of these APIs for a little bit. Uh, the first thing is you're probably gonna wanna leverage a tool like Postman. And the reason is that Postman makes it super, super easy to explore any kind of API endpoint. And Data for SEO actually has a Postman package that enables you to do that. And they enable you to explore all of their API endpoints and to learn about all of the different responses. And I strongly recommend that anyone who wants to play with APIs at all gives this a chance. And the reason why is that when you start to see what comes back in the response, you learn about how Google search results pages are built. And you learn about every single element that exists on the page. And then after you perform the search, you can actually go look to see how that particular uh, page was constructed. You can compare the response to the actual HTML code on the page to see how Google builds it. And then at that point, you get to understand how much data is available under the surface that the user never even sees. And there's that data that as an SEO or a technical SEO or someone who's building tooling to get data out of search results pages, you just learn how much more rich the data is and how much is hidden below the surface. So let's go through that uh, a little bit. For example, let's say that I performed a search for plumber. When I do that, I can see that there's local service ads. I can see that there are ads. I can see that there's a local pack. I can see that there's people also ask. I can see that there are standard search results pages, search results pages, excuse me, search results that have FAQ links, rich results driven by reviews, site links. All of this is interesting. You, we all know that, that this exists. And as we scroll down, we're gonna see more FAQ content. We're gonna see video content. These are all like SERP features that are highlighted through the API. We could scroll down more. And what's really interesting when we get down to the related searches, there's some really interesting information. At this point, oftentimes it's really, really useful to click into the search bar so that we can see the auto suggest and then compare that to the related searches to see how similar they are, but not exactly the same. And we can see stuff from our knowledge graph and our people also ask data is highlighted all at the same time. So these are all the things that I started to learn as I started playing with the API. And I got really, really intrigued because you do things like this. You'd see something called like the extra, extra results data 
which is only highlighted when you go through to a result and go back to the search results page. And then this, this information becomes available after you come back. But did you know that this data is also available all the time in the DOM? Meaning if I go to inspect this particular search result and then I go down and I actually look at it, what we're gonna see that's really interesting is I'll, I'll scroll, I'll highlight over this particular div in the DOM and when I go down another level, I can see that, that that div is highlighting something that's not visible to the user. I can then start drilling down into that further and further. And what we're going to find then is that same information that I showed you up above that's hidden all the time in the DOM. Super, super interesting. Uh, I also learned uh, in playing with the API that there are at least and definitely more in testing, at least 37 different rich result types that appear on the page. That was mind boggling to me. Uh, also what I found out was that when you look at this particular uh, JSON response, that there's one of the things that I thought was really, really cool was uh, this particular part of the response, the item types. Inside that is an array of every single different item type that appears on the page. And every single time you make a request to data for SEO, what you get back in the response is an array that shows you all of the different item types that appear on that particular search result page. That caught my eye and got me really, really interested because I thought to myself, wow, the appearance of these particular search uh, these particular item types is telling me a lot about uh, the intent as Google interprets it uh, for this particular search. This was like a, just an amazing moment for me. One thing that I found to be super useful as I was investigating this API <clears throat> was to type in a single quote space element and what we're gonna see is it's a one in 39. And what was really crazy useful about that is it enabled me to quickly jump between all the different item types. So if I wanted to process one particular item type, I could just scroll and scroll and scroll. And as I started to learn this API, I learned how to process each specific search type. And the reason I wanted to do that individually was so that I could learn what was available in each rich result. And as I thought through that process, I started to ask myself questions like, is it smarter to just store the raw response or is it smarter to process specific parts of it and keep some and lose others? Like I had a pretty clear sense that I wasn't necessarily concerned with the width and, and height part of the response. I also wasn't terribly interested in the X path. There were just a lot of different parts of the responses that I felt like I didn't necessarily need to store. And while it takes significant dev time to process each part of the response, I felt like it was worth it in my learning of it. So then the question was that I started to think about was, is it useful or interesting to also get page level data out of those search results? Like let's say I get an array of a hundred different pages that are ranking for a specific search query. Is there value in going to then go get page level data from those? And my answer at the time was yes. I wanted to be able to build content briefs based on the data that I'm finding in the pre-existing pages that are competing for the search term. And it made sense to grab things like title, description, H1 tags, and all the other headings. Maybe grab the structured data, maybe grab the full text of the page. Uh, there were just some things that I knew that I'd want. And I didn't necessarily want to be, be able to build out a scalable system that was making thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of requests at a time. 
I felt like the use case was probably going to be for ad hoc content brief building, but I still wanted to have a completely reliable solution so that if I had an array of URLs that I wanted to get data for, and I made 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 requests at a time, that I could be reasonably confident that I would get data back for all of the pages in that subset. So what did I find in building tooling around this? And I think this is cool to just explore for a minute. The first thing is this, building crawling solutions is hard. If you're thinking of doing this, you're gonna find that there's a lot of experimentation and there are a lot of challenges uh, that you're gonna face. Uh, I found in, in my experimentation that uh, building a crawler that's based on node.js and Puppeteer, it's pretty easy to implement that in a cloud function slash task queues type serverless setup, <clears throat> which would mean that data for SEO would make an API request, grab an array of URLs. With that list of URLs, I could then create a task queue that would each of the tasks would be one page that I'd want to go get data from. And then there would be a separate cloud function that would use Puppeteer to go crawl that individual page, get the page level data, and then store that in a database. And uh, I chose to store it in Firestore. But uh, what I found using that type of setup was that anywhere from 20 to 40% of the websites were blocking the crawler. And when I say blocking the crawler, my sense is that they were blocking it based on user agent, and they were also blocking it based on IP address. I also learned in conversations with other, other SEOs who are tackling the same problem that anywhere, you know, in different verticals, there are websites that appear in an outsized portion of the search results that have very complex technical setups that mean that you need to build a custom crawler specific to that website if you want to understand the true nature of an entire vertical search result. And that completely blew my mind. And it made me understand just how difficult a technical problem it is to get uh, both search result data and page level data of the, the pages that are ranking in the search results. And to do it reliably and at scale is a really, really difficult problem. And the more I thought about that, the more I started to understand just how difficult a challenge it is for all the SEO tools that we rely on for data. And I got a sense that if I was getting blocked 20 to 40% of the time, then that meant that other SEO tooling companies were getting blocked at least some percentage of the time on some percentage of websites. And what that meant to me was that the foundations upon which our data is built uh, was at least worth exploring. I don't want to call it suspect, but at least worth exploring on a deeper level to understand how impacted they are by, by these types of challenges. So I just wanted to give you a couple things from my, my journey and learning, and hopefully you can find some value in them. The takeaways are play with an API, make requests using Postman, uh, in, ex, explore search results pages using the inspector tool and have fun with this because man, is it fun getting into the data. Uh, I think you're going to find that if you do this, you're going to understand how search results pages are built and you're going to understand where data uh, that Google is using comes from. And once you understand that, I think you're going to be able to build content that ranks and uh, drives ROI for you and your organizations. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great day. This was fun.